Welcome to Weight Loss and Wellness for Real, the podcast where people like you get the practical solutions and support you need to permanently lose the physical and mental weight so you can feel better and live the life you want in the body and mind you want. If you're looking to overcome your stress eating, overeating, binging behaviors, and move to a place of freedom with food and your body, you're in the right place. Just a reminder that this podcast represents my own opinions. The content here should not be taken as medical advice. The content here is for educational and informational purposes only. Please consult your doctor or healthcare professional for any individual medical questions you may have. Hello, everyone. I hope you're all doing great and that you've been enjoying a week of maybe implementing one or two small thought work and or behavioral strategies into your life. If you've been doing one of these things for five to seven days, by now you are feeling momentum and willingness to keep it going and maybe even ready to add another behavioral or thought work strategy this coming week. So I'm going to have a few in this podcast episode that you'll be able to implement immediately after listening, and that will also get you closer to your weight loss or your health goal or really any other goal as well. I titled this podcast, How to Eat to Satiety and Why It's Critical for Lasting Weight Loss. If you are used to sort of that yo-yo dieting pattern, um, where you, you know, restrict or really start to follow a diet for maybe a week, two weeks, sometimes even four to six weeks, we can make it work, but then kind of go off the rails. That's what I'm talking about with the yo-yo dieting. Um, Or you're someone who maybe overeats or does some binge eating and then restricts uh, to compensate for that behavior Or maybe you're someone who diets for a while and while you're dieting, you feel hungry most of the time. Um, And by the way, just a little off here, um, but it's okay to feel hungry once in a while as weight is dropping. That's normal. We are meant to feel hungry. Um, It's not the end of the world, all those things. But for some of us with patterns of restricting to a degree that you are overly hungry, too often. Um, I'm kind of talking to you in this podcast. Um, I'm going to touch on what our brain does when we don't and do eat to satiety and how to leverage it. Um, What I'd like you to take away after listening to this is a better understanding on why eating to satiety for many of us is so important for lasting weight loss and also what eating to satiety exactly means. And then of course the hows, because you know I'm not gonna give you information without giving you some ideas on how to implement the information. How do you, so that we're gonna talk about how do you implement specific strategies in your own life to make sure you eat to satiety while still being able to lose weight if that happens to be your goal. So let's first define satiety. What exactly is it? Satiety is a term um, that's used to define the feeling of fullness and the loss of appetite after eating. So, you know, the goal is when we eat a meal, how we're kind of designed to be when we eat food, you know, the goal would be that we are at a specific fullness level and we lose our appetite. We don't, we don't have the desire, you know, to eat more. Um, so I define satiety as, as eating to a place where you are not stuffed, but you are satisfied in fullness. So if we, if we think of a hunger fullness scale of one to 10, uh, one being starving and 10 being so overly stuffed, satiety would be around a six or a seven. So again, that starving would be at that one and 10 would be where you can barely move, you have to unbutton pants, food feels like it might be up into your throat because there's no room for it to fit into the stomach. So when I'm talking about satiety, I'm talking about that six to seven number on that scale. 
So the research out there currently tells us that we don't really need to change a diet a lot to gain some health or weight loss benefits. That doesn't mean, I'm not saying you shouldn't try a different diet if yours isn't working. And again, by the way, when I use the word diet, I just simply mean whatever it is you're eating. I'm not pointing to a specific diet. Your diet is just whatever you happen to be eating right now. Um, you have your own way of eating, your own pattern of eating. So that's your diet. So we know that most of the time, okay, and there are exceptions, but most of the time, if you are overweight, you will lose weight by lessening the amount and the type of calories you're ingesting. Um, the problem is when you're doing this, when you're trying to do this and you're not eating to satiety, you're really setting yourself up for a for sure weight gain in the future. So when we talk about lessening the amount and type of calories that you're ingesting, um, I want to hear you to hear me clearly because there's such a debate out there in the um, weight loss world. And that is, you know, it's calories only. You just got to count your calories. And as long as you're under in your calories of the energy you're expending, you're going to drop weight. That is true, but it is also true that the type of calories matter because the type of calories, the type of food that you're eating causes, there's just so many things that go, in the, go on in the body, it causes a whole hormonal cascade, um, neuromodulator cascade. And because of that, you may experience cravings or not. You may experience hunger signals or not. And so what we're really trying to leverage is not only the calorie part, but the type of calorie um, that you are taking in to leverage some of that fullness, satiety, emotional well-being, all that kind of stuff. Okay, so let's think about why satiety is so important for those trying to lose weight long term. So if you are someone who is trying to lose weight and keep it off for life, which I'm assuming if you're trying, that's hopefully everybody. First of all, we know that many people overeat beyond satiety after they have cut their food and calories down. So they can sort of handle that low calorie and hunger for a little while, a day, three days. Some people can white knuckle it or maybe you know go even two weeks, but then the overeating or binging behavior typically starts up. And so why is this? You know you don't want to overeat because you want to stay on your health journey, but you do it anyway. It all has to do with your brain. Your brain needs or wants safety and security. It has a couple of big goals in general. Your brain has a couple of big goals in general to keep you safe and to conserve energy. Feeding yourself tells your brain you are safe. You have food, so all is well. This is why when we eat, we drop into that rest and digest or that parasympathetic system. Um, most of us live con pretty constantly in our sympathetic state, um, the opposite of our parasympathetic state, the sympathetic state, high stress, worry, depression, anxiety. So eating is even more rewarding to those of us living in that place because it's the one time during the day where we get to feel calm and relaxed, if even just for a moment. And that's because when we feed, the brain recognizes, okay, we're safe, we're good, and you drop into that parasympathetic state where we can rest and digest. So if we are never eating to satiety for a period of time because we're trying to drop weight, our brain recognizes or believes we are in trouble and we'll do this thing of really trying to conserve all our energy. So this can even get into things like, you know, the body really holding on to fat, um, even though you might be hungry all the time. And it, it also can put us into that, um, sympathetic or high stress state when you are that hungry consistently, which unfortunately for many of us drives us to eat more. And, and this is how losing weight backfires into stalled or more weight gain in the future. And it's really something that, you know, I kind of um, hone in with my clients and talk to them a lot about um, in order to kind of at least give them that understanding that this is why we don't want to drop weight super fast. This is why we don't want to feel hungry 
all the time or too often. So let me give you an example here. If I decide I need to lose weight and I start severely restricting calories on day one because I really, really can't stand my body and I'm in a state of almost panic, you know, the genes don't fit. Um, So, you know, I am restricting um, on day one like a ton of calories, right? I could probably ride that adrenaline and motivation and discipline for maybe, maybe one to three days. I'm never eating any meal to satiety while I'm doing this, and therefore, I am always slightly or very hungry all day long, right? So it's it's slight or very hungry um, for a real consistent period of time. I'm never eating any meal to satiety, and therefore, I am um, really experiencing low-level or high-level hunger for a long period of time. My sleep also starts to suffer due to this hunger. My brain notices this and immediately tries to protect me from myself and what it sees as danger because I'm starving it. So it throws up constant urges and cravings and also starts to slow everything down in my body system to conserve energy because it's not getting enough. So now I feel terrible. I'm highly stressed. Um, I'm having to white knuckle even more and more, and this is causing me more stress and then more hunger, not to mention I'm extremely crabby. Um, I'm becoming depressed with depressive symptoms and more anxiousness. I'm really short with the people I love. Um, if you've ever lived with someone who does bodybuilding, uh, you will know exactly what I'm talking about here because bodybuilding sort of takes it to an extreme um, because when they're getting ready for a show, uh, you know, they're dieting down and um, they're barely eating anything and they get so, so crabby. So you also, a person in this space would have, I would have no motivation to move um, and I'm just feeling really, really miserable. And, you know, This is something that can be so detrimental, um, even to the relationships in your life for the reasons I was talking about before, but you really want to understand, um, not eating to satiety often enough kind of creates this whole cascade of things. So let's talk a little bit about, um, some real specific examples of food that you can eat in order to gain satiety. And some foods, and remember again, satiety is not stuffed, it's not overfull. Satiety is that six or seven on the hunger scale. Um, so some foods for some people can never bring satiety. So for some people, I'm just gonna say it, most people, processed foods, you are going to consume more calories trying to find satiation through processed food. So processed simple carbs are even worse for this and what we know right now, things like donuts, cakes, cookies, french fries, chips, um, you guys get the idea. Oh, and liquid calories. Um, So things like soda and juice, um, things like certain fruits, uh, like even a ripe banana, most people, I mean, it depends on the person, but like a really ripe banana is tough to bring satiety. So a little side note, green bananas, by the way, create more satiety due to the resistant starch that they have, but then you have to eat a green banana. There's actually a scale called the satiety index that measures the satiety effect. Um, A bunch of foods were ranked according to their ability to satisfy hunger. So eating foods that score high on the satiety index can help you eat fewer calories overall. And this is very important for weight loss. Some of the most satiating foods are high in protein, things high in fiber, for some people, by the way, not everybody, Um, foods that are high in volume. So satiety also comes from hormones released when the stomach becomes filled up at a certain level. Some foods contain a lot of water or air, so these foods can help create satiety through high volume. So, so people who feel satiety through high through that volume part um, would look at using foods like that. And then also foods low in energy density means the the food is low in calories for its weight. So it weighs a certain amount, but it's low in calories for that. 
Um, so some of the most satiating foods from the satiety index scale, uh, number one is boiled potatoes. So boiling the pota- potatoes creates a specific starch that helps to create that satiety. There was a study done that found eating boiled potatoes with pork steak led to lower calorie intake during the meal compared to eating the steak with white rice or pasta. Um, Another one, eggs. Studies showed that eating eggs for breakfast rather than a bagel or cereal increased fullness and led to less calorie intake over the next 36 hours. Another study found that a protein-rich breakfast or eggs and lean beef increased fullness and helped people make better food choices. Um, This one I'm just going to touch on here for a minute because to me, this is one of the biggest keys. If I can get a client to shift into this behavior of for breakfast, they eat simply protein for breakfast, we will see weight come off because this really does work for most people. You feel fuller longer when you eat protein for breakfast. And then what happens is you end up making different decisions uh, throughout the rest of your day. You might not even, you don't typically even know you're doing it, but it's because your brain is not throwing up cravings or thoughts of food because it's full, it's satisfied. So that's just something to think about. It's like if you could just simply implement, if you're eating a bunch of carbs for breakfast and you are willing to switch just that one meal over to some protein, some eggs, um, some steak, maybe it's salmon that you cooked the night before, but having that can really help that long-term weight loss. Um, Okay, fish is another one. Fish actually scores even higher than eggs and beef. So fish actually had the second highest score of all the foods that they tested. One study showed it maybe is the omega-3 fatty acids in fish. One study showed that the specific type of protein in fish may have a stronger effect on fullness than other sources of protein. One study compared fish, chicken, and beef, and the fish protein had the strongest effect on satiety. So just something to consider there. Okay, another one that's interesting, warm soups. So it seems a little counterintuitive as most people, including me, think liquids would be less filling, but when it comes to warm liquids, we find that soups containing the same ingredients in solid meals are more satiating. So in one study, volunteers consumed a solid meal uh, and a chunky soup or a smooth soup that had been put through the food processor with the same ingredients. The feeling of fullness and the rate at which the food left the stomach were measured. The smooth soup had the greatest impact on fullness and the slowest rate of stomach emptying, followed by the chunky soup. And then the um, non-liquid meal came next. So just another thought, eating a little bit of warm soup before your dinner at night may contribute to helping with satiety and having you eat less overall. Okay, another one, meat. So high protein foods like meat are highly filling. Beef has a really powerful effect on satiety. It ranks um, second in the satiety for protein rich foods, so just under fish. One study showed that people who ate high protein meat at lunch ate 12% less at dinner compared to those who had a high carbohydrate filled lunch. Next one, Greek yogurt. Greek yogurt is different than regular yogurt, and you really need to know the difference here. In a study, women consumed 160 calories of regular uh, yogurt, so low in protein. It, you guys, it's this. It's like I, I'm, I probably shouldn't say brand names, but it's the stuff that you go in and and you buy that tastes really, really good and sweet, sort of like melted ice cream. Sorry, but that is not, that is just a bunch of additives, chemicals, and sugar put in there. It's really low protein. Um, And so that is not the yogurt we're talking about. Greek yogurt is a very specific kind of yogurt. It's thick um, and it uh, is much tangier. You do, I mean, for some of you who are used to really sugary stuff, you do have to get used to it a little bit, but it really can be delicious. Um, I use it a lot uh, in place of sour cream or cream cheese. Um, Anyway, uh, the study found that those who ate the Greek yogurt felt full the longest and were less hungry for a longer period of time. So, um, 
you know, if you're going to eat yogurt, choose the plain Greek yogurt. And then I would just say if you must eat fruit, the ones to go for would be apples or oranges. Both rank pretty high on the satiety index. Um, And definitely, I'm sure you know this, but do the whole fruit. Never do the fruit juice. Not going to fill you up at all and is going to create hunger quicker, in fact. Just remember, there's a lot of sugar in those fruit juices. Okay, nuts. And, And this is kind of an interesting one. Nuts are filling... But you have to watch your portions carefully as they are really, really easy to overeat. So 10 almonds is a decent portion size just to give you a sense of it. Um, Probably don't want more than that in a day. They're high in protein and fat and they do have some carbs. Another thing just to remember, nuts do have carbs. Um, Here's the trick, nut butters, my favorite. Do not do the same thing for satiety that eating the whole nut does, which made me super sad, but um, you could probably do your own in a one study and realize this is true. Uh, One study showed that chewing almonds, this is another tip, 40 times led to a greater reduction in hunger and an increased feeling of fullness compared to chewing them 10 to 25 times. And obviously we're not chewing nut butters at all. So do one portion size of real nuts and then chew them 40 times. That would be your tip to create more satiety. Another one that I love, coconut oil. Um, Coconut oil contains this kind of unique combination of of fatty acids. And I think it's around like 90% saturated uh, fat. So hopefully you all know the narrative that all saturated fat is bad for you is completely wrong. Hopefully you all know that by now. If not, do do some research here. If you still um, uh, believe this, you do want to get into truly researching some of this because so much of that has been disproven. Coconut oil consists almost entirely of medium chain triglycerides. And these uh, fatty, these fatty acids enter the liver from the digestive tract where they may be turned into ketone bodies and ketone bodies appear to have an appetite reducing effect. One study showed um, that people who ate breakfast supplemented with medium chain triglycerides ate fewer calories at lunch. Um, this is how bulletproof coffee, if you've heard of that, um, all the fatty coffees got started. Another study looked at medium and long chain triglycerides and found that those who ate the most medium chain triglycerides consumed on average 256 fewer calories per day. So that would just be something else you could experiment with a little bit and see if it works for you. Bottom line, filling foods have specific qualities. They tend to be high in fiber or protein, and they have a very low energy density. They tend to be whole, single ingredient foods, not processed foods. So the take home here, focusing on whole foods that fill you up with fewer calories can help you lose weight in the long run. I'm gonna say it again, focusing on whole foods that fill you up. So you might need to do a little experimenting, um, figuring out which ones fill you up, which ones don't. But foods that fill you up with fewer calories can help you lose weight in the long run. And just remember, again, we're all unique and individual. So for some of us, the previous listed foods that I just gave won't work for us. As an example, I find I do not feel as full with coconut oil versus when I eat a potato. So, um, you know, the coconut oil is a great one for some people. It doesn't necessarily work for me. So you have to pay attention to you and what works for you. Certain types of food and also the macronutrients, the ratio of macronutrients we eat can create different levels of satiety. Remember, macronutrients are proteins, carbohydrates, and fats. So kind of the combination we use uh, depending on our unique individuality can help create different levels of satiety for us. So protein is the winner for most of us for this. So if you focus on eating healthy whole food protein at your meals, each and every meal, your snacks, you're going to feel satiated without as many calories um, as you would need from processed or simple carbohydrate foods. So you know, think about this. If I on purpose include protein at every meal, I will more often 
not always by the way, but more often, not eat as many calories throughout the day to get satiated. So this is gonna help bring on weight loss. Now, implementing some of these changes, like I talked before about getting clients to just eat protein at breakfast can also really help. Um, But I do understand implementing these changes is not always easy for everyone. And that is where I help coach my clients on how to actually implement a strategy like this through specific ways of planning and making the strategy fit into their family and lifestyle. So bottom line, you can learn, (coughs) excuse me, your satiety signals, but it does take some practice if you're not used to it. If you haven't felt hungry in a long, long time because you overeat often, that is a clue you know, that you are overeating. I'm talking here about eating to say tidy, but it doesn't mean we don't always feel hunger. You want to feel hunger. On that, that um, hunger scale, you, know, you want to feel like at about a three or a four before you start eating again. And so that means you are going to feel some hunger, but it's just not um, really, really intense hunger all the time, right? So we have some of the hunger. We want to be at about a a three or a four before we decide to eat. And then we want to eat until we're at about a six or a seven. So learning um, your satiety signals, also your hunger signals, but I'm just focusing focusing on satiety here. It does take some practice. You have to really start with putting attention on it. So here's a couple things you can do to help learn to help to learn your satiety signals. Practice mindful eating. Eat slower. While you're eating, pay attention to how all your senses are affected. Take the time to describe to yourself what you smell, what you feel, what you hear, what you taste and what you see. Just doing this, the five senses, I call it, this slows down eating and really just attunes your brain to what you're doing. So get attentive, pay attention while you're eating, give eating all of your attention, sit down without distractions, chew, taste, enjoy, express gratitude for your food. All those things are part of learning how to mindfully eat. Another thing you can do is use the fullness scale that I was just talking about. When you finish your meal, ask yourself what you think your number on the fullness scale is. Write down what you ate and write down your number. So keep a log or a journal or a diary just for this. Over a week, you will have learned what meals gave you that sweet spot of that six to seven on the hunger scale. Um, and remember what we talked about, that that six to seven is where you feel comfortably full. It is not over full. Um, and it is nuanced for each person. So that's why you really have to do this work and, and pay attention. Uh, one strategy is that if you are eating to satiety, you will not feel hungry for at least three to four hours. So if you eat your first meal at 10 a.m. and then if you don't experience hunger until about two, you probably ate to satiety at that last meal. So the only caveat here is that if you only eat one to two meals a day, um, which really works for some people, um, but not all of us, then you know you can't really use this technique. Um, but if you're eating normal meals, normal snacks, um, you know, you should be able to go three to four hours without feeling hungry. And if you're doing that, then you know you're eating to say tidy at your meals. Another thing to just ask yourself in these moments, do you feel calm after you eat? Do you feel energized? Do you feel satisfied or more clear headed? You should feel these things when you eat to say tidy. You should not feel lethargic or negative or want to take a nap. You've ate too much if that's happening. Or just side note, you may have an allergy to one of the foods you're eating. There's lots of other things. I know that. But for right now, for this this purpose, we're just talking about um, satiety and hunger signals. And here's one that really worked for me. Um, If you even think that you're done, if you even have the thought, I think I'm full, I think I'm satiated, then you are. Okay, so if you even think it, then you are. If that thought pops up, listen to it. Stop eating and say out loud, I'm full or push your plate away. 
You know, your brain really needs some of that behavior or that um, voice, I'm full, you know, and or pushing your plate away. It gives a signal that it's over. Um, And the worst thing here that can happen if you got it wrong is that an hour later, you're hungry again, and then you can eat again. So that's worst case scenario. But if you think you're done, if you're thinking to yourself, I think I'm probably full or I think I'm full, or maybe you take a sigh, that's that's the signal. Just be done at that point. And so with all those things above, practice, 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 right? You really got, um, if you want to get into that space where you know, satiety and hunger signals come easily and naturally and, you know, they don't stress you out and you're not over full and you feel really energetic and good after you eat. If you want those things, if you want some weight loss over the long term, then you really got to practice. Okay. So satiety, you knew you couldn't get away without me talking about thoughts here. Okay. So I gave you a lot of behaviors that you can implement or that you can practice. And I would say, just pick one of them. You need, don't need to do all of them. But we're going to talk about thoughts here too, because there are such things as as satiety thoughts. They look something like this. Okay, satiety thoughts look like this. One we just talked about. I've had enough. I am comfortable and feel energized. If I get hungry later, I can eat more. I've had enough and I can have more tomorrow. I have given my body healthy food that satisfies me. I am content. I am proud of myself. Those are just a few, but here's why it's important to practice some satiety thoughts, to have them at the ready, because when, if you are used to overeating, pushing that plate away when you know you are satiated or being done eating when you're satiated, if you are used to overeating, this is really difficult to do. It makes you feel sad. You will miss not being able to eat to that overstuffed place or that you have to quit eating before you want to. Um, So you actually will have emotions that come along with this practice. And that's why you need the satiety thoughts to tell yourself, I've had enough. I'm comfortable and feel energized. If I get hungry later, I can eat more later. It's really reassuring yourself that, yes, this is hard right now. It's sad, but I do get to eat again in the future. Now, some of you may be listening to this and be like, what in the world? You know, this sounds, but if you understand what I'm talking about, well, if you've been through a lot of emotional eating, stress eating, using food to help change feelings or create feelings, you are going to get this. You are going to understand that it is sad when you have to stop eating because you're practicing satiety. So use these satiety thoughts to help shift that emotion a little bit, to help lighten that emotion a little bit. And things like, I have given my body healthy food that satisfies me. I am content and I am proud of myself for stopping what when I'm satiated. Those thoughts, when we think them on purpose, help Um, bring that emotion level down a little bit, which really does help us to stop the eating. Okay, so those are just a few. You could take some time to journal your own satiety thoughts, read them often. When you are thinking satiety thoughts instead of lack thoughts, lack thoughts are things like I need more or I want more or this is not enough food. So when you think satiety thoughts on purpose, your brain's going to relax and you're going to have the ability to follow through on eating the exact right amount for your body. And that's just going to happen automatically. Thinking satiety thoughts on purpose over time is going to make you more and more automatically willing to stop when you're at the six or seven on the hunger fullness scale. You know, eventually after lots of practice of this, you get to a place where you're not even thinking about it. You're just, you're done eating. You may even have more food on the plate, but you just push it away. You're full. You're, you don't give it a second thought. It's a lot of freedom in that. So try one of the mindfulness techniques and one of the thought work techniques this week. Start today and watch how automatic eating to satiety becomes that then can bring about that lasting weight loss. Okay, that's where I'm going to wrap it up. You have some things to try to implement. If you found anything useful from this episode, would you please take the time to subscribe to this podcast? And also, uh, if you're on Apple Podcasts, give it a five-star review. I'd really appreciate it. Um, when you subscribe, you'll be sure to get the newest episode once they're released. And all of this just helps me keep the episodes rolling out and continuing to share information like this uh, from this 
uh, platform. And if you're already subscribed, thanks so much. And I would also just ask if you think anything from these podcasts would be helpful for someone you know, a friend or a family member, um, if you would just maybe send them a link and ask them to take a listen. Um, that helps uh, more people uh, get to a place where they can hopefully learn some strategies and techniques um, to make the changes in their life to get them closer to their goals and dreams. You can head over to my social media for more resource- resources. You can find me on Instagram at Heinen Counseling and Coaching. Name is spelled H-E-Y-N-E-N. Once you're there, um, feel free to get in touch with any questions. You can also go to my website at heatherheinen.com. And from there, you can contact me via email, but it'll also give you a lot more details on um you know, how I uh, coach my clients, how I, well, I'm also a therapist, so therapy with clients, um, how you can gain access to that and to some of uh, my online weight loss coaching with some clients, um, just because of the price point, um, you know, we do just do emails back and forth and we do coaching that way. So it's really on your own time and um, doesn't cost quite as much. Okay, so if you keep listening, you're probably going to hear the information I just gave you, but um, it might go into a little bit more detail on how to get in touch. I seriously forget the ending is automatic and I always forget what's in there. Oh, one other thing. I do have a recipes only page on Instagram at peak protein recipes and peak is spelled P-E-A-K and all the recipes um, are there just to help people who are trying to up their protein intake. Um, It's just easy access. So you can go there as well. Really appreciate you listening. Hope you all have a great week. Did you know you can find a lot more help from me on my website? Go to heatherheinen.com. Heinen is spelled H-E-Y-N-E-N. And get in touch with questions on all things I offer, like online courses for overeating, weight loss, goal attainment, and also my coaching and counseling services.